Hey guys, Kevin Gizmar for The Flash, Season 2, Episode 5, The Darkness and the Light. And I was definitely looking forward to this episode, mainly because of the insane cliffhanger last week. I mean, I really didn't know what was going to happen in this episode. And this was by far the best episode of the season. There was so much great stuff going on this episode. First of all, it is awesome to see Wells back. Honestly, it was awesome to see him back. Of course, um, I can't think of his name right now, but the guy that plays him, uh, Tom, I can't think of his last name right now. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, obviously did a great job. But the thing I liked the most about this episode was that it was actually kind of Cisco's episode, if you think about it. Like, this was really Cisco's big episode. This was the episode where Cisco, I think, went from just being a regular... Tom Cavanaugh, that's who I'm talking about. That's He was great, as usual. Um, but this is really Cisco's episode where he goes from just being very sidekick to being a full-fledged hero, and I love that. But let's get into this episode. There's a lot to talk about, and uh, a lot of transitions in this episode, which I definitely really like. So... Basically, we start off this episode, we see Earth 2, um, which is something that we needed to see, because obviously we need to see what Wells was like on Earth 2, and I really like this. We see eight months ago as Wells is holding a press conference, and apparently metahumans are fairly new there too. You know, this is nothing new, this is new for them. So, Star Labs are committed to preventing the bad guys from getting a foothold. He rolls onto a ser out a series of apps that will allow people to detect an approaching metahuman, and if you guys are wondering, this is Harrison Wells. This is not Eobard Thawne. This is Harrison Wells, which I'm happy about because I don't want repeated storylines. I want to see the actual Harrison Wells and not just Eobard Thawne. So it happens that Jay Garrick shows up looking non too pleased, and Garrick demands, and basically Jay demands that Wells be honest. He created the many humans, including Doom, Zoom, and Wells denies it, saying that it's the Flash who hasn't done his job by stopping Zoom. And his daughter, Linda, Linda is his daughter in Earth 2, Ask him if he's okay, and he says he's fine, and I thought that was a fantastic way to start the episode. Just show what's going on, show what's going on in our two show, how different this Wells is. This Wells is a lot more like a celebrity. I mean, he was a celebrity on Earth 1 as well, but definitely here, he, like, he has a book that Thawne as Wells wrote, and basically... After some initial reservations by Team Flash about trusting Wells, he says he has to come, he has come to help Barry defeat Zoom. I thought that Zoom sent Wells out, which I think Zoom did, but it seems that Wells is there to help him defeat Zoom. Now, I'm not going to say I trust Wells 100%. I, I'm not going to say that because I don't know if we can trust him right now. I don't know if he is telling the exact truth and if Wells, um you know, was sent out by Zoom, or if he went there by himself to help Barry, I'm not really sure. My question is, if that's true, why the hell would Wells do something like that? I don't really know. Why would he care about Earth-1? I don't know how to even know him. I mean, these are questions we need to find out, and I, I like that we don't know that yet. So, he missed a Barry that he created Zoom and the Earth-2 metahumans, and now he's doing something about it. He wants to put a stop to them, because he knows how powerful they are, and he probably didn't think it was going to go as badly as it did. So, Wells doesn't care about what happened with the old Wells, but before he can really finish talking, Joe comes in and shoots at him, you know, thinking that Wells has returned, that this is, you know, Thawne, not Wells, and Barry uses his speed to save him and takes Joe outside to bring him up to speed, and I like seeing Joe, you know, really thinking that, you know, Wells is back, wanting to do something about it. And, uh, basically, you know, Barry tells him, look, this is not the same guy, he's from Earth 2, and Joe doesn't trust him whatsoever, and, you know, Barry's saying he doesn't really trust him either, but he's gonna have to get through that, because, yeah, this is a different guy, this is not the same Wells that was on Earth 1, this is a clearly different Wells, and they're gonna have to deal with that, there's really nothing they can do about it. So Wells wants Big Belly Burger, and Cisco isn't happy about it. You know, they're not happy to see him there. They, they just want him gone. And at the picture news, we get a lot more with Linda in this episode, because obviously Linda is Wells' daughter in Earth 2, and we find out more what's going on here. Linda's being chewed out by her boss, Larkin, for writing a piece on a local football player's domestic abuse scandal, and Joe comes to get Iris, who has trouble wrapping her head around the Wells news, by the way, guys, nothing with Iris and her mother in this episode, which I'm happy about. Not that I haven't been liking the storyline, but let's face it, it is kind of just... It's a good storyline. I like where it's going. I like the way they're setting up Wally West. I will say that. I think they're doing a good job with that. But I think what's going on, you know, the other storylines are going on are a lot more interesting than Iris's mother. It kind of feels one note, and I'm happy they've kind of deviated away from it here. So... 
she has trouble wrapping her head around the Wells news. You know, she doesn't want to believe that Wells is back, but she's all right. And uh, I like seeing Iris, you know, all right. She's like, you know what? That's fine. And again, that really shows how confident Iris is. Joe gives her a gun saying that he hopes Barry is right, but that he can't trust it. He just can't trust the fact that this is not, you know, he wants to believe that, you know, Barry, but he still kind of feels like this might be the old Wells. And I can understand that. I mean, they don't look that different at all, really. One has glasses, and the other one doesn't. That's really the difference. So, at Jitter, Cisco doesn't want to trust Wells, but Barry's trying to talk him into it. Patty comes up behind them, and this is probably Patty's best episode yet. Not that I haven't really loved her, but this episode, I loved her character, and I really hope they make her main character very soon, because she is just, she's great. She really is. She mishears what they are talking about. She gets texted, you know, I'm Barry, of course, trying to cover up not being the Flash, and she gets texted, has to go fill a report. There's an awkward goodbye after Barry inadvertently turns her down for a date, and Cisco tries to tell Barry to ask her out that he has to be bold, and he goes to order his coffee, stumbles through asking the girl behind the counter for a date, and this again shows how Cisco is kind of like Barry's right-hand man right now. You know, he's kind of like Barry's sidekick calling the shots. He's he's Barry's best friend, so you can understand that. Well, besides Iris, of course. You know, she turns him down pretty resoundingly, and when he walks away from her, he gets a... And basically, he it, it, Cisco then gets a vision of a woman in a costume robbing a bank, and we really focus a lot more on Cisco's visions in this episode, which I loved. I like that we're focusing more on that. So when Barry comes up to ask if he's alright after getting shot down, Cisco tells him that they've got an Earth 2 breacher at the Central City Bank, and of course, Barry doesn't know how he knows this, and he encounters a woman who uses a blast of light energy to toss everyone around. Barry saves him, but she gets away, and uh, basically on Earth 2, Wells tells him back at Starlight was back at Starlight was a small-time thief before she was chained by the particle accelerator explosion, and Wells wants to capture her and use her to lure Zoom to Earth-1. But Kaylin enters with Jay, who protests, because obviously she Jay would know what's really going on with Wells and if they can trust him, and Barry wants to know how Cisco knew about Light, and he makes up a thin lie, but Barry needs to go try and track down Light, which Cisco is going to work on the lab. And it was great to see Jay back. I will admit, guys, that last week's episode, I might have overreacted a bit. It wasn't the greatest. It really wasn't, but I thought this episode was a lot better, and, and seeing Jay back as well is just awesome. I definitely love just everything going on with Earth 1 or 2 is extremely interesting, and I love it. Barry has some police department to ask out Patty, and back at Cisco's lab, Wells 2 has taken over the space, much to Cisco's annoyance, and, you know, he's pretty much back in that role that Wells was in last year. You really get to see that here. And Cisco reveals that Wells killed him, and that Barry traveled through time, which interests this Wells, you know, what Wells 2. Um, obviously... That's something that, you know, if you remember, Wells was the one that told Cisco what's going on with him in these visions, and he wants to know if Wells, too, would know what's going on there. Because, you know, they have to have some, the same intelligence level. I mean, they're, they're the same, they're both idolized, they both, you know, are very intelligent. You have to think that they're probably connected in some way. So Barry heads to a bank where Dr. Light is breaking into the vault. She's not planning to kill him, but will steal a bunch of money. Blow town and hide. When Barry tries to reason with her, she raises her helmet's visor to talk to him and reveals herself to be none other than Linda Park. And obviously, this surprises him. He hasn't seen Linda since they've broken up, and he's obviously shocked to see her. And when she realizes he knows her, she blinds him and runs. Obviously, she doesn't want her identity known, and... We get a very interesting plot point and also some very funny scenes here that I really liked. My biggest worry about, you know, Barry being blind is that I was worried this joke was going to be very one note, but they did a good job of making it actually very funny. Um, but they also made it a good storyline because Barry tells the team that he's worried about Linda since Light knows now knows she has a doppelganger. And this is a very good example. This is something I like. I like that we're seeing how different these characters are in Earth 2, you know, um, Linda is a villain, and we know that Caitlyn is, I think, gonna be Killer Frost in Earth 2. I don't see how this is gonna happen in Earth 1. I think Earth 2, she's gonna be Killer Frost, because it, would, it really would make sense if they did that. So, I'm interested in seeing, you know, what's going on with the other characters, like, what's Iris in Earth 2, what's Barry in Earth 2, what's Cisco in Earth 2, I wanna know this stuff, we don't know, Joe in Earth 2, we don't know any of this stuff. So he wants to go help her, but he's still blind, and by all accounts, will be up for hours. And as Jay and Caitlin head off to check on her, Iris shows up to help Barry, and he forgets that he has a date with Patty. And uh, 
he feels like he has to cancel on her because of the blindness, but Iris says, you know, that he shouldn't cancel and that she's really great, and again, I love seeing Iris wanting Barry to move on. I definitely really love that, but Iris gets an idea of how Cisco can help, and I like the scene where uh, she sees Wells, and she's not particularly happy, but she's realizing that she just has to deal with it. You know, she knows that there's nothing she can really do about it. They can't get out of this anyway. She just has to move on and just deal with it. You know, Wells is back. She has to deal with it. It's just that simple. So we get a probably one of the funniest scenes The Flash has ever done. I personally love this scene. I can understand if you guys thought this scene was kind of cheesy. I can understand that, but I thought this scene was very funny. I definitely really love this scene. Barry has a pair of sunglasses when he gets to the restaurant, one that Cisco uses to allow Barry to see and tell him how to get around. And seeing Cisco communicate with Barry like this, I mean, we've seen this in other shows, but they did it really well here. Um... And basically, the day the day is economy errors because the glasses aren't high resolution enough to really do the job. You know, he can't see what Linda's wearing. Everything's black and white. It's just not the best um, camera, which I definitely think adds to the really funny stuff. But they're having a really good time, and uh, I like some of the stuff that he was telling her about. Like, he tells her about, you know, he doesn't know what color dress she's wearing, and he's like, you know, whatever color I think you're wearing, it looks good on you. He's doing a good job overall. You know, they're both so awkward that it works so well. That's why Barry and Patty are so good, because they're so similar. I mean, you would think that Barry and Patty are related. That's how good they are together, and I love that. So in a car outside of picture news, Caitlin tries to talk to Jay during their stakeout. Jay says he fought Zoom several times but always barely escaped with his life and he tells Caitlin not to trust Wells and she says that she doesn't and he says straight out, don't trust Wells. And again, you know, how can you trust Wells? I don't think we can trust Wells right now. I don't know if Wells is telling the truth, but I, I'm going to listen to Jay because obviously Jay knows what's going on. He was the Flash in that world, so he knows what's going on there. So on their day, um... Patty asks Barry about getting struck by lightning. He tells her it was life-changing, and Patty tells him about a time she had a near-death experience after hitting her head in the water as a kid, and when, you know, when she was nine years old, and as they're chatting, she tells Barry that she knows he can't see her, and he has to take off the glasses, and they're laughing about it. I like that she wasn't upset about it. She actually found it pretty funny, and it added to the day. All he tells her is that he had his pupils dilated. Good save, Barry, definitely. But I felt so bad for Cisco because Cisco's like, I can't see anything right now. I thought that was definitely really great. But Cisco does congratulate Barry, and I definitely really love that. One of the funniest scenes The Flash has done. Really good stuff. And it really showed um, how great of an, you know, how funny of an actor Grant Gustin and uh, Carlos whatever his name is, I can't think of his name right now, but whoever plays Cisco, um, how great they can be as actors. They were very funny in this scene, and they did a good job of not making it feel uh, really cheesy. It was definitely pretty funny. I enjoyed it. So in the stakeout van, Jay and Caitlin compare notes about their worlds, and uh, basically, you know, they talk about what's going on with Wells and everything, and just as they're about to kiss, they're right close to kissing, the van is over to by Dr. Light. She goes into the picture news, sends everyone away, they all go except Iris and Larkin, and Light won't let Linda leave, saying that she wants her life, because Linda's human, and Light, you know, she's used to being in, her dad being in the spotlight, it makes sense why Light is obviously jealous of Linda, because Light is Wells' daughter, Wells is this big star, you know, he's always in the spotlight, Linda's a reporter, she is very independent, she gets to work with Iris, and Light really wants that, and Light says that the only way she can stay alive is to become Linda, even though she's never killed before. So this is very much like a Firestorm Stein situation, where she needs the doppelganger in order to live. And when Larkin goes to stab her and save Linda, Dr. Light kills him, and uh, Iris shoots her, but it hits her helmet, knocking it off her head. Jay arrives to try to stop her, but she again sends a wave of light energy and knocks everyone down, and it's just not going well at all. The thing is, though, what I love about this scene is that Patty and Barry, Barry has no, you know, Barry has no idea this is going on, which I definitely like seeing. Um, I like seeing the rest of the team, you know, try to function without Barry. It's something that we don't get to see a lot, and I thought they did very well here. So elsewhere, Patty walks Barry to her car, the two kiss goodnight, and afterwards he is sufficiently healed that he has his vision back, just like that quickly. So they each get calls about the attack on Picture News, and there Linda asks Patty how it's possible that she saw herself, and she says that she's alive thanks to Iris, and Barry promises the West that he's going to find her, and that Light won't kill again. He's going to make sure that she's okay, so, you know, that, that he finds Light, so... 
back at Star Labs, Wells blames Jay for what happened, calling him a coward for running from Zoom, and they are fighting. I mean, it was a pretty crazy scene. You really see how much these two really don't like each other very much. I mean, it's understandable. Wells did something that Jay's not happy about. Jay obviously doesn't trust him one bit, and he probably doesn't want him to work with Barry because Jay wanted to be that mentor for Barry. Jay wanted to be the one to train Barry, and Wells has completely taken over. So you can, you really do feel bad for Wells, though, because I do genuinely feel that Wells wants to have some sort of a relationship with this team. You know, he doesn't just want to be, he wants to create some sort of bond with them, even though you're not sure if you're supposed to trust him. I do think this Wells is not pure evil like Thawn was. I do think this Wells is definitely different, and I like that. So, Barry breaks the fight up, takes Wells away. Wells tells him he should be teaching Jay, not the other way around, and that Jay is just not as good as Barry. And uh, I think that's interesting that Wells brought that up. Of course, Jay is older than Barry, and uh, I definitely like that. So Barry tells Wells that the other Wells was his mentor before he learned the truth about Thawne, and uh, that's why it's kind of awkward for Barry right now. So when Barry mentions Light's mask, Wells goes to it saying that he knows how to fight Light's give it to Cisco, and he uses his metahuman low king watch to prove that Cisco is a metahuman, and this is when things in this episode just get great. The episode was already great, but this scene really changed the course of this episode. I, and honestly, I think changed the course of some stuff that's gonna happen in the show, and I really like that. Because Barry's really upset that Cisco didn't tell them, and I like that Wells just flat out told them right there, because this is something that they needed to know, and you know, he... This, this was just his metahuman locating, you know, it wasn't like Wells intentionally meant to do this, he just located as a metahuman because he knew something was going on with Cisco, and Cisco wanted to know, so he figured why don't I just tell them. So, Barry's briefly upset that Cisco didn't tell them, but Cisco explains that Wells, one, thought it was a blessing, and Cisco says he's not sure what brings on the visions, and Cisco is actually worried that he's going to be a supervillain, that that's why Wells was happy about, because he wanted to turn him into a villain. But Wells insists that he touched the mask, he does, but nothing happens, and Wells yells him to try again, and when he does, still nothing, and when Cisco says he can't control it, Wells presses the mask up against his chest, telling him yes he can, and uh, that was a really great scene, I have to say, very powerful stuff there. Cisco sends Barry to the train station to intercept lights, and Barry arrives and evacuates the platform, and... Cisco and Barry basically get to do, you know, Cisco basically gets to help Barry out here, which I definitely like seeing. They fight briefly while Barry struggles to find a blind spot. Well, so when the confuser give her more than one target by running so fast, he creates after images. Now, when he said run so fast, I'm like, oh shit, don't say that because, of course, why did Wells want Barry to run so fast so he could get the fastest he could, then he could kill him? You know, if you remember, that's what that was all about. So, you know, Wells is saying run fast. You can definitely tell that this, you know, is um, giving Barry deja vu because Barry's used to hearing this from Wells and he does it, but she uses her concussive wave and knocks him back. And after a pep talk from Jay, he tries again, this time managing to knock her out. And at the lab, they lock Light away in the pipeline and uh, Cisco essentially was able to help them, which I definitely like seeing. I feel like Cisco is going to be a much more essential part of the team now and I'm very happy about that. So, Barry plans to use her to lure Zoom to Earth-1 and end this. You know, he's gonna lure Zoom, because obviously Zoom sent her out, and he just, he wants to end this. He doesn't want this to go on anymore. And Jay tells him that this is a huge mistake, but Barry says he spent too long being afraid of the Reverse Flash, and he's not gonna be afraid anymore. And I do agree with Barry. I mean, part of the reason why things got so bad with the Reverse Flash is because Barry was just, didn't think he could defeat him. And now, that he's defeated Wells, he definitely is a lot more confident, and I love that. But Jay says he's not ready to fight Zoom by himself. But Barry says he's got Wells, Jay, Caitlin, and Cisco. You know, he's got all of them. And Jay says he can't in good conscience help him when it will lead to tragedy. He knows someone's going to die, and he tells them that they can't trust Wells and have to ask why he suddenly changed his tune about Zoom. And I do agree with Jay. I mean, it does feel sudden, but it does kind of make sense. But the thing is, you know, I don't think Barry is necessarily trusting Wells. I think he's just using Wells as an ally because right now, at least, Wells is saying he's an ally and Barry needs all the allies he can get. I think that's really what it's about right now. And I can understand that Jay, you know, is really upset with Barry and doesn't want him to trust Wells. But it, like I said, Barry is trying to get all the allies that he can because he needs enough allies in order to take down um, Zoom. You know, he needs enough of them. So I like seeing that. So at Jitters, Cisco goes back up to the girl behind the counter again, and this time it's to order coffee, and I don't know if they're going to do something between these two, but you definitely see some romantic chemistry between Cisco and this girl, 
and she turns around with a meaningful look, asks if that's really all he wants. She says she just moved to Central City, and it's a big change from where she came from. She again asks now that she's a little more acclimated to town, if coffee is really all he wants. He introduced himself to her, and she introduces herself as Kendra Saunders. Now, again, I don't read the comics, so I don't know if Kendra Saunders is in, is in um you know, big character, but I'm assuming she is because they made her name so important, so I'm assuming that she is Cisco's love interest. I'm assuming these two are going to be love interests. I mean, you can just tell the way it's going. That's what's going to happen here. So, back at Barry's table, Cisco brings a coffee and Kendra's phone number. You can definitely tell these two are going to date, and I like seeing Cisco and Barry, you know, get these dates, and I feel like they're definitely going to have a double date at some point with Cisco and Kendra and Barry and Patty, and I'm looking forward to that. And it seems like Barry and Patty, things are growing well between them, and the team... Basically, then decides to name Cisco. Um, you know, he says he wants a name, and they want him to do it. But he comes up with the name Vibe, and uh, I thought that was awesome. I love it. They call him Vibe. Obviously, we know that they were saying him up that way. It is now officially he's Vibe, and that's awesome. That's what we've been waiting for all season. I love it. I really do love it. I have to say, I love that they are building Cisco up uh, to be Vibe, and now he officially is Vibe. So from across the room, Wells watches them. Now this look he gives, I don't know what this is really about. I don't know if this is a, I have you all fooled, or if this is, I'm very proud of you. I don't really know what this is, but I definitely think they're handling it better than just the evil Wells um, in the beginning of season one. Because let's face it, that was pretty, like, cheesy, definitely. I think they're handling it better here. But then on, we see on Earth 2, Zoom has Wells' his daughter hostage, saying that Wells abandoned her, and she says her father will save her, and he said that's still to be decided, and it seems that Wells is telling the truth here. It seems that Zoom really is against Wells, and Wells is really against Zoom, so this is definitely going to become a problem. His daughter is hostage, and uh, that definitely is going to be a problem to see what happens with that. But overall, guys, that's basically how the episode ends. What a great episode. Really, what a great episode. Um, let's talk about Cisco, because like I said, this really was Cisco's episode. As much as it was Barry's episode, I think this is definitely more Cisco's episode, because this is really when we got to see Cisco emerge as Vibe, and how is Cisco going to become a more integral part of this team? Because obviously, he can now see these visions, and I really like that, so how is that going to affect him? I definitely like seeing that. But now I kind of feel like there's going to be a bit of a power struggle between him and Barry, because he's just as powerful. Powerful. He can now see these visions, and Barry can't do that. That's something I like. You know, they're showing that Barry isn't invincible. You know, they keep showing him with all these new powers and things, but this is something that Barry does not have that Cisco does, and I like that. I like seeing something that, you know, um, like I said, Cisco has that Barry doesn't, and I think that's really great. Now, Wells. Can we trust Wells? I don't know. I think his word is true. Just from that last scene, I think he's telling the truth. But there is that possibility that there could be something bigger planned. I don't think he's telling the full truth, but I think the part with him, you know, wanting to um, stop the metahumans and, you know, destroy them, I think that part is true. I think all of that is true, but we'll have to see. Um, Jay clearly knows more about Wells than we do, so I like that. I like that this Wells is different. That's something I like right off the bat, because this Wells is a lot more, um, you know, he's not a metahuman. He's not Eobard Thawne. This is Harrison Wells, and I really like that, I have to say. I think they're doing that very well. Um, Jay and, and, uh, Caitlin, clearly these two are getting very close. I like their bonding, I have to say. I don't think they're rushing it. I think they've done a good job with it overall, and I like the way they're handling what's going on with that. But that's gonna be interesting. Um, Caitlin becoming Killer Frost, we know that's coming. Does that happen in Earth 2 or in Earth 1? That's my big question with that. You know, how is she gonna turn into Killer Frost? Because we know that's coming. We saw it in the flashbacks of the season finale. You know, we saw it in the flash forwards of the season finale. So, we know what's coming. It's, it's definitely gonna happen. Um, how, I don't know. I really love the way they're handling Barry and Patty. Patty doesn't suspect a thing, because Barry's just doing a really good job keeping this secret. I don't know how long he's gonna be able to keep it. He's eventually gonna have to tell her, but for right now, he's doing a very good job, and I really love the relation between the two. It's really cute stuff. I definitely like it. Um, definitely very well done. 
Jay and Wells, like I said, they're definitely going to have some power struggles. I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen with them because obviously these two don't trust each other at all. They don't trust each other at all. They don't think that they're good. You know, they don't think that Barry should trust them, and I can totally understand that, but clearly they don't trust each other really at all, and I think it definitely is very interesting. Let's also Earth 2. Earth 2 seems to be a lot more complex than Earth 1. Earth 1 is obviously, you know, complex, but and it has its casualties and events and things like that, but Earth 2 just seems a lot more productive in that there's just a lot more going on, and I, I really like seeing that, I have to say. It's going to be very interesting to see the difference between Earth 2 and Earth 1, because there definitely is a big difference there, and I don't know exactly what that, you know, what that means, but I think that definitely is interesting that there is such a huge difference that definitely is going to be interesting to see how that plays into Earth 1, obviously, because they're two very different worlds, and I really do like seeing that. I like seeing Linda getting more to do as well. That definitely is very well done. But Iris is the character that I'm most impressed with because she's the one that's not freaking out. You know, you think that Iris would be freaking out because of Eddie. She's not. Is Eddie alive in uh, Earth 2? I, I feel like Eddie's alive because why would he be dead? I mean, Eddie has to be alive, right? I mean, it would only make sense that he's alive in Earth 2. It would just make sense. You know, since Wells is alive, Eddie should be alive. So... That could be interesting if they bring Eddie on. I don't think they're, I don't know if they're going to, but obviously he was a big part of the show, so I'm assuming they're going to show him in Earth 2, just because I feel like they have to. They have to show him in Earth 2. They can't not show him in Earth 2 and completely forget about him. But overall, guys, amazing episode. Best episode of the season, definitely. Let me know what you guys saw this episode, and I will see you guys in the next year, which will be for tonight's episode of Ains of S.H.I.E.L.D., which I know they're not going to top last week's episode. I know that, but I know this is going to be a great, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a really good episode, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.